further, further consideration stage of the Children's Services Bill, Children's Services Cooperation Bill, I call Mr. Stephen Agnew to move the bill. Moved. Members will have a copy of the Marshall List of Amendments detailing the order for consideration. Amendments have been grouped for debate. In provisional grouping uh, of amendments, selected list. There is a single group of amendments for debate. The debate will be on amendments 1 to 6, dealing with children's well-being, reporting and cooperation. I would remind members intending to speak that during the debate, they shall address all of the amendments on which they wish to comment. Once the debate is completed, any further amendments in the group will be moved formally as we go through the Bill, and the question on each will be put without further, further delay. If that is clear, we shall proceed. We now come to debate with Amendment 1. It will be convenient to debate Amendments 2 to 6. The amendments deal with the definition of children's well-being, the deadline for the first report on the bill, the impact of a report under this bill on the programme for government guidance and regulations relating to Clause 4, and the definition of child. I call Mr Chris Little to move Amendment 1 to address the other amendments in the group. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, I'm glad to rise on behalf of the Alliance Party uh, to give our continued support uh, to the Children's Services Cooperation Bill. Uh, it is a long-standing manifesto commitment uh, of ours to support legislation that introduces a statutory duty uh, on government departments to cooperate and collaborate, and indeed improved cooperation is needed on many issues but particularly encouraging to see that being brought forward by the proposer in relation to the planning, implementation and monitoring of children's services. I'm glad that that uh, bill will include statutory duty to cooperate. It will also uh, uh, cover the pooling of budgets and indeed uh, enhance reporting mechanisms. Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, it was regrettable uh, that having uh, given co some considerable work in relation to the bill uh, from OFM DFM officials uh, that there wasn't uh, ministers available to bring forward uh, an amended draft of the bill at previous uh, consideration stage. Um, I have made my view known in relation to that, uh, and it's regrettable that it, it required the proposer uh, to take initiative uh, to do so himself, but I, I welcome the initiative that has been shown in that regard. That was the, the first stage that we were able to see uh, the new high-level outcomes to be monitored and achieved as part of the bill, uh, the physical and mental health, enjoyment of play and leisure, learning and achievement, living in safety, economic and environmental well-being, enablement to make a positive contribution to society and living in a society that respects the rights of children and young people. Um, it, as I said, it was the first stage at which those new high-level outcomes uh, were redrafted in that form. They are all issues that I have worked on as an Assembly member uh, with the proposer, Stephen Agnew, on the all-party group on children and young people. Uh, and it has been a pleasure to work closely with the children's sector on those issues. In the time between uh, consideration stage and further consideration stage, I thought it prudent uh, to make the proposed amendment number one, uh, which will add living in a society which, in which equality of opportunity and good relations are promoted uh, to that important list of high-level outcomes uh, for the well-being of children and young people. Uh, I think uh, whilst it was not ideal in terms of process uh, to bring the amendment at that particular stage. I have referred to the mitigating circumstances uh, that required it to be done so at that stage. And I think, uh, whilst the process might not have been ideal, that the proposed amendment is consistent with the high-level outcomes being brought forward uh, and the substance of the amendment, that of seeking to ensure our children and young people are able to live in a fair, shared and prosperous society. 
is reasonable, is good, and is a good aim for us to have for our children and young people. And I look forward to hearing the contribution of other parties. I'd be glad to respond uh, to those. In terms of Amendment No. 2, uh, the proposal to have a, the executive report on the operation of this bill not more than 18 months after adoption of the children's strategy rather than three years. I'm content uh, to support that proposed amendment and indeed did so at, at committee stage around that issue. Uh, in terms of Amendment 3, I'm again content to support uh, that the report on the operation of the statutory duty and other provisions introduced by the Children's Services and Cooperation Bill uh, be considered in the production of a programme for government. Uh, I understand that there has been agreement uh, between the proposer and the Minister of Finance and Personnel in relation to Amendment 4 and 5, and I'll be content to support that approach as well, and indeed content uh, to support Amendment number 6. In conclusion, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, I think it is absolutely essential that the Assembly require the Executive to coordinate services and to maximise resources as effectively as possible, particularly on behalf of children and young people in our community, to ensure that we do deliver improved outcomes uh, across the board for our children and young people in our society. Thank you. Call Mr Chris Hazard. I too welcome the opportunity to speak at the, this stage uh, of the bill. Uh, it is positive to see, I think, uh, support from all sides of the House today uh, on the progress and, of course, the amendments uh, that we're, we're dealing with uh, in front of us. I suppose, in kicking off first with Amendment 3, um, on behalf of my colleague Megan Fairn, who cannot be here today to move this, um, I think Amendment 3 perhaps makes explicit what uh, we already know is implicit in, in what we are dealing with, uh, and that is to put on the face of the bill the importance of reporting, uh, but not for reporting's sake, uh, and that when executives do go forward to put together a programme of government, they, they learn from the lessons of such reporting, and that when we tackle issues of child poverty, when we tackle issues of gaps in mental health provision, uh, of where maybe co-design between departments isn't what it should be, uh, that we have the lessons and we have the record to go on. So I think it's very important. I, I, I welcome, um, certainly already, the, the Alliance Party um, agreeing to, to go with it today. And as I say, agreement from all sides of the House uh, will be very welcome when we are dealing with it. I think to deal with Amendment 1, firstly, I think sometimes it's important that we don't conflate the issues of equality of opportunity and good relations, but I think it adds something to this bill to have this amendment in it. I'd be more than happy again to, to, to go with it today. Um, again, I think it's positive that with Amendment 2, for the first report and the initial report anyway, uh, that we do reduce that time period from three years to 18 months um, and three years after that going forward. You know, I think that is a positive, and uh, we said that the last time. Um, I understand there is an agreement between the Proposer or the, the Mr. Agnew and the DFP around Amendments 4 and 5. Uh, I think Amendment 5 does provide the guidance and the framework uh, which is necessary um, if we are to look at pulling of uh, resources and uh, better use of funds. I think it's appropriate guidelines around accounting and governance and accountability will be important. Uh, so I think that I think that is valuable. Just finally, on with Amendment 6, uh, I think it's only right that we do extend. Um, the definition of children and young people to cover an additional category for those young persons um, who an authority may have to provide services for. Uh, so, on the whole, uh, more or less uh, content um, for the amendments to be made here today. I think it, they all do a bit, a bit of tidying up and strengthening of the bill as it was the last time. Um, again, I would call on those to support our own amendment, Amendment 3, um, and look forward to hearing what everyone has to say. Gormogut. Call Mr. Alex Atwood. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And um, could I confirm that, from our point of view, we will be supporting amendments one, two, three, five, and six, respectively, um, subject to the questions that I have to ask, uh, in respect to which I anticipate getting satisfactory answers. Uh, could I first of all again acknowledge the work of uh, Mr. Agnew and the Bills Office? Um, uh, Mr. Agnew can be. Uh, rightly uh, pleased and should be properly acknowledged that he is now within touching distance of another private member's bill being passed in this chamber. 
uh, of which he has been the sponsor, but much more significant uh, that a bill that can, over the lifetime of future mandates in this assembly, uh, can have great authority and can have a great impact, and can uh, potentially positively change uh, for the better uh, the lives of children, young people, their parents, and carers. And that's no mean achievement, and that's no mean success uh, by Mr. Agnew and those outside this chamber who have argued for this approach, uh, especially in the, uh, in the children's sector. Could I deal uh, briefly, Mr. Deputy Speaker, uh, with the amendments? Um, and as I say, we're, we uh, will be, or uh, we are inclined to support Amendment uh, One. Uh, this is from the Alliance Party in respect of equality of opportunity and good relations. And the SDLP, as a matter of principle, uh, believes that those standards should be some of the standards that inform uh, legislation uh, as it goes through this chamber and as it is then implemented. But I would ask Mr Little to confirm to the House that uh, by adding uh, Clause H uh, uh, at uh, uh, line 11 um, of the bill as it's currently drafted, that it doesn't end up reconfiguring the balance within that clause, because clause 1 2, uh, which defines the well being of children and young persons, has been carefully drafted in the past. It has been reworked, Mr. Uh, Deputy Speaker. It does borrow from international best practice and the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. And therefore, it has as its concentration, as attention, um, those standards uh, necessary for uh, our own domestic law in order to achieve fully informed by international law. And whilst the SDLP would very strongly support the sentiments of equality of opportunity and good relations for the reasons that outlined. Uh, I don't want to create, and I'm sure Mr Little doesn't plan to create, a tension within the legislation between uh, Clause 2, A, B, C, D, E, F and G, and uh, the wider issue then of equality of opportunity and good relations. Um, uh, there, there can't be a hierarchy within that uh, list. There has to be an integration within that list if the purpose of the bill to be, is to be achieved. And if there is now to be a further subclause, uh, I just seek reassurance from Mr. Little that there is no tension within the body of the bill as it would then be amended, um, and that uh, the, the right assessments will fall to government departments in order to live up to the various subclauses in a way that doesn't somehow or other um, uh, create some tension that is hard to manage. And I look forward to Mr Little's uh, reply to that matter, and I'm sure I'll be satisfied on the far side of his reply. In relation, Mr Deputy Speaker, to Amendment 2, I'll leave out three years and insert 18 months. Um, I think a number of people, certainly, if I recall properly, I might have made this point at consideration stage, that the early life of uh, this Act and how it is or is not shaped and taken forward by government departments is going to be absolutely critical. Um, the best example, in my view, of a reporting function, if you like, uh, was uh, with the uh, implementation of patent, which had 175 recommendations and then 675 performance indicators and those performance indicators were assessed and managed by not just an oversight commissioner but by a panel of experts brought in in order to force home the implementation of Patton, uh, not least in the particular circumstances at that time when there was suspension of these institutions. And therefore, this issue of uh, strong, uh, hard accountability uh, is necessary if you're going to try to shape society in a better way, especially a society like ours that in too many ways clings to the past. And therefore, we very much welcome the fact that uh, the uh, reporting period is going to be 18 months. And whilst endorsing that, 
Um, I would like to think that the reports, um, uh, especially in the early days, even if there is not a statutory reporting function, that there is going to be an architecture in relation to uh, implementation of the new duties arising from this bill, uh, that uh, even if it doesn't have to come to the Assembly uh, uh, in this early months, nonetheless there is a rigorous architecture to ensure that that which is needed to be implemented is seen to be implemented as quickly as possible. Uh, could I also uh, uh, confirm to Mr Hazard that the party will be supporting uh, Amendment uh, uh, 3. There, there could have been a potential risk uh, that uh, the executive taking account of the most recent report published under Section 5 of this Act might mean only that most recent report, but the relevant clause in the Bill as currently drafted makes it clear that uh, the report, whenever it is most recent or more historical, uh, has to cover the full range of potential issues and responsibilities arising from uh, the new duty in a way that ensures that the most recent report will very much capture the uh, character and content of all the reports in order to ensure that this uh, new duty uh, is implemented as fully as possible. Um, I understand that Amendment 4 is not going to be moved, and therefore I would ask uh, the Minister of Finance and Personnel when she speaks just to confirm what uh, is the intent uh, in respect of the regulations to make provision for procedures to be followed by children's authorities, uh, because whilst I'm sure it's not the intention that that is going to be overly prescriptive, it is much more going to be enabling. And the reason I make that point is, uh, if I may stray only momentarily, Mr Deputy Speaker, there is a power uh, proposed to be granted to the Secretary of State under the draft legacy bill, in respect of which I am not able to say very much, which grants the Secretary of State the power to make regulations that potentially uh, could prescribe the life of the work of the proposed Historical Investigations Unit in a way that would create so many obstacles and difficulties of people going to the HIU for reinvestigation of past murders, that the HIU would not be able to do its job in a way that is enabling as opposed to be prescriptive. So I would ask the, uh, the Minister to confirm uh, the character of what is intended uh, by that particular amendment, although I would anticipate that her reply will be satisfactory. I call Mr. Mike Nesbitt. Uh, Principal Deputy Speaker, thank you very much indeed. I think uh, on behalf of the Ulster Unionist Party, I can say that we are broadly content to support the amendments uh, before us uh, in the Chamber uh, this afternoon. Before I uh, give any detail, uh, react, detailed reaction uh, to those amendments, uh, may I first of all again congratulate Mr Agnew uh, on bringing this, this bill uh, before the House. Uh, and our support for it, I think, informs our decision-making in terms of the amendment. It seems to me what uh, Mr Agnew is doing is recognising that uh, this government, like many, uh, traditionally operates vertically, uh, sometimes disparagingly called ministers uh, working out of silos, uh, and to get a real effect uh, and improvement in delivery uh, of government, we need to go from the vertical uh, to the horizontal. Uh, which means cooperation between the executive departments uh, and the agencies uh, associated uh, with them. And also a uh, switch in focus uh, from inputs uh, to embrace outputs and, above all else, outcomes, uh, in this case, for our young people. And I believe Mr Agnew uh, does both uh, in terms uh, of this bill. So, in terms of the amendments, uh, Amendment 1, uh, which adds equality of opportunity and good relations uh, to the list uh, within Clause 1 uh, of the Bill, as I say, we are broadly content to support it, but I would ask uh, Mr Little uh, if he could provide us with more definition uh, of what exactly he has in mind in terms of not just equality of opportunity, but perhaps more importantly, Good relations, because uh, 
he and I are both aware uh, that a definition of good relations is something uh, that we think would be uh, beneficial uh, going forward. It is something that has been debated on more than one occasion uh, in the Committee of the Office of the First Minister uh, and Deputy First Minister. And indeed, there's been a debate not just about the meaning of good relations, uh, but whether good relations or good relationships uh, should be the marker uh, that we are laying down uh, in legislation. Uh, in terms of Amendment 2, the proposal uh, that the report should come after 18 months uh, rather than three years, uh, we have no difficulty in supporting that, Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, the idea being that uh, an early indication of the success in terms of outputs and outcomes will be better served uh, by the er earlier deadline uh, of the 18-month report. Were we to stick to three years, uh, I would imagine we would be well into the second half of the next Northern Ireland Assembly mandate uh, before we begin to see uh, the outworkings of Mr Agnew's uh, proposals. Uh, in terms of Amendment 3, uh, as uh, Mr Atwood had said, we, there was a concern uh, that this might be a reference to only the most recent uh, report in terms of uh, the, 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 the focus that the executive had to bring uh, to this uh, bill in terms of preparing the next programme for government, but we are satisfied uh, that is not the case. Uh, Mr Agnew, I take it, is not moving amendment number four, uh, so I shall, I shall leave that. Uh, five uh, in return uh, in respect to the Department of Finance and personnel. Again, uh, we see uh, some merit uh, in nailing down the exact nature of the relationships there. Uh, and Amendment 6, again, the party would be uh, supportive. Thank you very much, Principal Deputy Speaker. Call Mr. Alex Maskey. Uh, so, Principal Deputy Speaker, I am not speaking at this section. I'm just going to move the amendment later. Thank you very much, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. I'm not going to refer to the other amendments, save for the amendment I moved myself, Amendment Number Five, because it's a departmental uh, amendment, and I'm speaking as Minister. And I want to say, first of all, at the outset, that I am supportive of the overall aim of the bill, namely the achievement of a coherent and comprehensive service delivery system, which is efficient and cost-effective and works across government. Just picking up from Mr Nesbitt's point about silos, vertical as opposed to horizontal, and this will hopefully uh, deal with that issue in relation to children's services. And the new statutory power to share resources and pool funds for which Clause 4 of the Bill provides is clearly intended uh, to advance the aim of efficiency and cost effectiveness and to eradicate any duplications or gaps with regard to the commissioning of services or the development of work programmes. So the goal of a smarter, more streamlined, better targeted system will, uh, I believe, only be achieved if appropriate operational and governance arrangements are put in place. And those arrangements need not be cumbersome or over bureaucratic, uh, but they should draw on established best practice and ensure that roles and responsibilities are clearly defined and that there is a consistency of approach. Uh, Principal Deputy Speaker, one might not expect the bill to explicitly refer to operational matters, however, one would expect some indication of how such matters uh, will be addressed, and in this instance uh, the bill is silent. And during discussions at official level, uh, it has been suggested that such matters could be addressed uh, in the guidance for which Clause 6 provides. However, uh, that guidance will issue from OFM DFM, and although Mr Agnew had sought uh, to amend the bill to ensure that DFP would be uh, consulted around that guidance, I think it would be best uh, if there were a specific regulation making power to allow uh, DFP to ensure that appropriate operational and uh, governance arrangements are put in place. Uh, and I want to thank Mr Agnew for his cooperation and his uh, decision not to move, his indication not to move Amendment 4 and to accept uh, and support uh, Amendment 5. Uh, to Mr Atwood's point uh, in relation uh, to being, he's not here unfortunately, in relation to uh, being prescriptive uh, and uh, referencing uh, other pieces of legislation, uh, I just want to be very clear that we fully in the department support 
uh, the drive to avoid waste uh, and, and to maximise resources, so it would be very unlikely uh, that we would stand in the way of arrangements that are, that are designed to do uh, just that. Um, we are, however, keen to maintain strong uh, governance arrangements, and this amendment, uh, we believe, will uh, ensure that the legislation is not used to circumvent the executive's role in agreeing public expenditures uh, decision. And at consideration stage, Mr. Agnew said the bill was part of the drive towards good governance, uh, and I think this amendment uh, that I have tabled uh, is in keeping with that. Principal Deputy Speaker, it's often said you have to plan uh, for success and a clear operational framework for the handling of resources and the handling of funds will allow us to do just that. And I commend this amendment to the House. I call the sponsor of the bill, Mr Stephen Agnew. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. And at the outset, I'd like to thank all members for their contributions uh, to today's debate. Um, but also in terms of their work on this bill. Um, uh, as I've said all along, it's important that a bill that requires government departments to cooperate is in itself um, produced uh, in a cooperative manner. And that has been the case throughout um, between members, the, the, the OFMDFM committee, OFMDFM itself and the children's sector, as well indeed as the, the other departments. Um, I, I welcome the amendments that have been brought forward today and again the, the input um, that, that that brings to the bill and in terms of getting the, the final details correct before we move to um, uh, final stage. And uh, I, I will speak to each of the amendments briefly um, and refer excuse me and refer to uh, members comments uh, on, on the amendments amendment one uh, proposed by by Chris little um, adding a new high level duty uh, within the definition of well-being um, I think it, it, it's certainly the case that a Child's well-being can only be enhanced if we, we live in a society that promotes good relations and, and equality. Um, uh, Mr Atwood, I believe it was, made the point about the, the international nature of the, the, the outcomes in the original bill and I suppose the local nature of, of this particular amendment that does reflect our, our local circumstances that, that that's required where in, in other international practice um, a reference to good relations um, may not be, be, be necessary but we, we know the specific circumstances of Northern Ireland and I think the promotion of good relations and equality um, can only be something that, that can help the, uh, the outcomes for children and young people. Um, Mr Hazard made the point in relation to that that uh, equality and good relations should not be, be conflated and um, I, I, I suppose uh, I, I can see the point that he's trying to make. I think with within the, they're, they're mentioned in the, the amendment they're mentioned as separate entities and, and neither one um, appears in my reading to take precedence over the other um, and so I, I, I'm content with the amendment in that regard. Um, Mr. Mr Nesbitt, uh, the chair of the committee and, and once again I'd like to thank um, him and the committee for their work on this bill and Mr Nesbitt makes the point about a definition of good relations um, and I know this is something ongoing has come up um, with other pieces of legislation. I think in the, the context of the definition of well-being um, around some of the other high level duties uh, we, we were given advice that the drafting does allow for I suppose less, some less precise language um, which is why I suppose they were, were moved from being um, the outcomes in themselves to, to instead being a part of the, the definition of well-being and well-being itself being the outcome um, so that the legal language was tight. So I think within the, the uh, all-encompassing definition of well-being, um, I think the amendment can sit. Um, but I, I agree that progress on the definition of good relations is something um, that, that the Assembly needs to address um, and, and, and put right in the future. 
Um, addressing Amendment 2, my, my own amendment, in terms of reducing the uh, report, reporting time um, from when the, the bill is introduced. Um, and it does come back, and, and, and credit to Mr Alex Atwood, he did make the point at consideration stage that there was a risk that if a report was not required until three years after royal assent, that it may take two years before anybody starts to really have any urgency or drive around implementation of the bill. Um, my intention with the, the original draft for three years was to ensure a, a, a balance between operation of the Act and reporting, and a need to, to maybe answer some of the questions about um, bureaucracy, um, ensuring that uh, Children's Authority's time is spent um, enacting the bill rather than reporting on it. But I think his point was well made that um, when this bill hopefully receives royal assent, and I am confident that it will, um, that there is an urgency, there is a drive, um, and, and that from day one, um, children's authorities are engaged in ensuring cooperation takes place and children's well-being is improved. I think this amendment will, will, will help ensure that urgency uh, does take place um, and that, that the, 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 the bill can um, start to take effect from, from the, 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 the moment that has passed. And indeed, I would say, because it has been a, a bill that has been long in, in process, and departments and, and all the authorities have been well aware um, that it's been underway. And I think um, some of the intention of the bill has already hit home with, with um, a number of departments. And I think so. I think that process has already started. But I think the, the passing of the bill um, will give urgency, as indeed it, it's. It's um, coming to the floor of, of the assembly has has really got departments to grapple with it, and, and why we're seeing, for example, um, amendments today from DFP. Um, the, the will of the house is clear that, that, that we progress with this, and departments are, are, are already stepping up um, and to to make sure it's right. And I, I include in that as well as DFP bringing their amendment today, work of the Department of Health alongside OFM DFM um, in terms of getting clauses of the the bill right and, and getting the drafting correct. So I'm certainly, um, I certainly urge members to, to support uh, Amendment 2. Um, and and from, from the comments to date, it appears that, that there is broad support for it. Uh, Amendment 3 uh, uh, being, uh, being put forward today by, by Chris Hazard and, and, and being moved by Mr Maskey. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to, to, to wish Megan Fern well. Um, I, I, I'm aware, aware that she's, she's not unwell, I hope it, or that she is unwell, sorry. I hope that it's not serious. Um, and indeed, she took the time to, to text me to, to wish me luck with today's debate and apologise for not being here in person to, to move her amendment. Um, so I, I appreciate uh, that she did that and the time that she has taken um, to give consideration to this bill um, throughout. In terms of the amendment itself, I think it's very welcome. Um, it, it had not occurred to me to, to link the, the operation of the bill to the programme for government, and I, I do think that adds, a, adds another element um, uh, to ensure that, that cooperative working and, and the children's strategy are at the heart of what government does. Um, so, in, in that regard, I, I'm very pleased to see the amendment, and I thank um, the members for bringing it forward today. Um, and it does, al along with the reporting, um, indeed the, the feedback in the programme for government, it will give another line of accountability um, for how cooperation has taken place and, and how the efforts. To, to remove duplication, uh, end waste, and uh, to improve efficiency, um, uh, to, to ensure that, that, that those objectives are achieved. Um, uh, addressing then amendments four and five, um, the I, 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 I have said. Um, that I will not move Amendment 4 um, and instead support Amendment 5. Um, the reason being it was, I suppose, a, 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 a somewhat late in the day uh, amendment. Uh, um, I, I was aware of concerns within the uh, Department of Finance and Personnel um, about the, the, the drafting um, 
around guidance in relation and, and what that would mean in relation to the pooling of budgets. It was certainly always the intent of the bill that that uh, DFP would take a lead role in this, um, albeit at, at, at that stage and, and with my amendment um, going through OFM DFM. I am certainly have engaged with OFM DFM. They are content, and indeed I am content, that, that it should be explicit that the, 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 the power for regulating um, the pooling of budgets um, and any guidance in relation to it should come from from DFP itself, that's where the expertise lie. As I say, I think that was always how it was intended to work, but perhaps um, it wasn't explicit in that. Um, and I, I welcome the Minister's support, and indeed she articulated um, some of for what is me um, key elements of the bill um, to advance the aim of efficiency um, and cost effectiveness, um, I, I think were her words, and, and that's precisely what the bill is about to ensure that the resources are spent not on bureaucratic processes, not on duplication um, and, and, and silo working between departments, but of a more joined up, coherent system of governments, particularly in delivery um, in relation to children. And I, I, I welcome her, her presence and contribution. To the debate today, I welcome the amendment. I do think it, it, it adds to the bill and strengthens the bill, um, and uh, ensures that the pooling of resources is something that's on the department's agenda. Um, because I think, for me, the pooling of resources is a, whilst it's, it, the clause is an enabling power to allow the pooling of resources. I think it is a necessary outworking of the bill if we are to achieve those aims um, and, and to really end silo mentality. And, and I, I think I made this point at the previous stage. We will have all the reporting, and, and, and that will be necessary to, to scrutinise the, the, the operation of the bill. But for me, the real test will be the real, uh, the real sign that the bill has taken its effect, effect is when the departments start pulling budgets for children. And, and I, I think of an example that was raised by the Children's Law Centre, um, where a girl at school with cerebral palsy um, had to fight two years, um, had to go through a two-year legal, legal battle to get the physiotherapy um, she needed in school. And the concern was because both departments, the Department of Health, who, who perhaps had the, 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 the resources in terms of staff and skills to provide physiotherapy and the, the Department of Education, who I suppose it was um, within their setting the, the, the needs weren't being met, and the wrangling of who was to pay for, for such provision, who would pay for that physiotherapy in school, um, and, and the, the nervousness of each department to take responsibility. I believe that that's the example where if we had pulling of resources um, in areas such as special education needs, that then the focus would be on ensuring that a child gets the necessary provisions they need to meet their full potential um, and not have, um, and as in that case, a, a two-year legal wrangling to ensure that the, the, the provisions uh, so that a, a child can meet their full potential can, can achieve in school. Um, to ensure that we, we, we don't have those wranglings um, to, to, to make that a challenge and to make that something that has to be fought for. It should happen as a matter of course, and I think the, the pulling of budgets um, will go uh, a long way to resol resolving those types of issues. Um, Amendment 6, um, and again I, I mentioned the collaborative working with departments. Uh, it, this was something raised by the Department of, of Health. Um, the provision of accommodation uh, to young persons over the age of 16 but under the age of 21, which is captured by the children's order, um, but was not captured by the definition of children and young person with, within the bill. Um, so I, again, I thank them for, for bringing this to my attention. Um, the the uh, legislation which I'd sought to replicate with the bill was that which defined children and young person 
um, the, in, in ter terms of the role of the Children's Commissioner. Um, I, I'm not sure uh, as to why this particular section of the Children's Order is not referenced in that legislation, um, but I know that there was concerns um, that, that it was a provision being left out um, of the bill. Um, and again, housing is another area um, where, whereby the needs, um, the health needs, um, and the accommodation needs of a young person may fall between two different departments. Um, and uh, again, it is important cooperation is required in those instances to ensure, once again, the needs of the young person rather than the, I suppose, the responsibilities of the departments are the focus. Um, cooperation should ensure um, that that is the case, and I, I, I would ask the House to support Amendment 6 um, to ensure that, that all children and young people are, are, are captured by this bill, um, all those in, in, in need as referenced by the Children's Order, and I believe that the amendment makes sure that that, that is the case. So just in, in close, Principal Deputy Speaker, again, I would just like to thank all members for their contribution. Um, I, I, I welcome what is the continuing support for the House for, the, to, for, for this bill. Um, I, I, I anticipate the, the amendments with the exception of Amendment 4 receiving unanimous support um, and uh, move into final stage um, in the near future with, with a, a good wind behind the bill. It is about ensuring good governance. It is about effectiveness of delivery. It is about efficiency, efficient use of resources, and ensuring that uh, we move away from silo mentality, which can be wasteful, um, which can mean both time and resources uh, wasted um, in, in terms of coordination. I think um, if we start working together for, for the, the planning commission and delivery of children's services, we can improve the outcomes for children in Northern Ireland. Thank you. Call Mr. Chris Little to wind. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I, I begin by saying that the uh, cooperation that we have seen today, I think, is uh, demonstrative of what can be achieved in this assembly when we do work together. And I think we have to begin by giving uh, sincere credit to the proposer of this bill, Mr. Agnew, and the children's sector uh, in the way that they have generated uh, the cooperation in relation to this bill that will see its further progression through the assembly and hopefully to the conclusion that will lead to achieving much better coordinated outcomes for children and young people in Northern Ireland. Uh, I welcome the, the contributions that have been made today. Uh, Mr Hazard uh, emphasised the need to connect uh, learning and progress that would be achieved uh, by the Bill to the programme for government. Uh, Mr Atwood rightly commended the proposer uh, for his work on the Bill. Uh, Mr Nesbitt uh, referred to the need for government departments to take an approach uh, that would see horizontal cooperation. Uh, rather than vertical down delivery and for a focus more on outcomes rather than outputs, which can too often be the case. Uh, the Minister for Finance and Personnel helpfully uh, supported the aim of the bill and its uh, dedication to achieving more efficient, cost-effective delivery for our children and young people in Northern Ireland and indeed put forward Amendment number 5 to enhance the good governance uh, of the bill. Mr Agnew, the proposer of the bill, um, as I said, deserves great credit for the progress that has been made in relation to the bill. He emphasised uh, his encouragement in seeing the cooperation that had gone on between MLAs, the OFM-DFM committee, and cooperation that he had had with the Office of First and, uh, Minister and Deputy First Minister officials who had contributed uh, to the bill uh, also. There were some specific questions raised uh, to myself with regards to Amendment No. 1. Uh, Mr Hazard had sought assurances that there was not a conflation of equality of opportunity and good relations. Mr Atwood sought assurances that there was not a creation of a, a tension 
uh, between the amendment and indeed uh, section 75 of the Northern Ireland Act and Mr Nesbitt uh, sought assurances in relation to uh, definition. I would uh, give those uh, reassurances today. I, I think equality of opportunity and good relations are not uh, to be conflated. They are complementary uh, aims, uh, essential in a Northern Ireland context. Uh, the amendment has made reference to section 75 of the Northern Ireland Act uh, to ensure that it is uh, complementary to that piece of legislation in terms of Mr Atwood's concerns. And indeed, in terms of a definition, uh, the issue raised by Mr Nesbitt, I think the work of the OFMDFM committee, of which he is chair, and I am glad to be deputy chair, in our inquiry into the Building a United Community Strategy has referenced the need for stronger definitions uh, on terms such as good relations. Uh, but I do believe that work by the Equality Commission uh, has given us uh, clear uh, points of reference in that regard, and indeed they uh, have developed a working definition of good relations to mean the growth of relationships and structures for Northern Ireland that seek to promote respect, equity and trust and embrace diversity in all its forms. And I, as other members have said today, believe that that is an important aim for us to have for our children and young people in Northern Ireland. Uh, so, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, that concludes my uh, contribution today. And again, I would uh, commend the proposer of the bill uh, for the further progress that is being achieved on it. Now, I move to the amendments. Uh, amendment proposed to Clause 1, page 1, line 11. At end, insert words as printed on the Marshall list. The question is that Amendment 1 be made. All those in favour say aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Amendment 2 has already been debated. I call Mr. Ignew to move formally Amendment 2. Moved. Amendment 2 proposed to Clause 5, page 3. Line 40, leave out three years and insert 18 months. The question is that Amendment 2 be made. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Amendment 3 has already been debated. I understand Ms. Fer Megan Ferrin cannot be in the chamber today, but that Mr. Maskey has indicated his intention to move the amendment. I call Mr Alex Maskey to move formally Amendment 3. Moved. Amendment proposed after Clause 5, insert a new clause, Programme for Government, as printed on the Marshall list. The question is that Amendment 3 be made and the new clause stand part of the bill. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Amendment 4 has already been debated. I call Mr Agnew to move formally Amendment 4. Not moved. Amendment 4 is not moved. Amendment 5 has already been debated. I call the Minister of Finance and Personnel, Mrs Arlene Foster, to move formally Amendment 5. Moved. Amendment proposed after Clause 6 insert a new clause, regulations relating to Section 4, as printed on the Marshall list. The question is that Amendment 5 be made and the new clause stand part of the bill. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Amendment 6 has already been debated. I call Mr Agnew to move formally Amendment 6. Moved. Amendment proposed to Clause 7, page 5, line 5, Insert words, words as printed on the Marshall list. The question is that Amendment 6 be made. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. That concludes the further consideration stage of the Children's Services Cooperation Bill. The bill stands referred to the Speaker.